This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. As uh, the House of Representatives has just voted to condemn Trump's actions in Syria, the measure passed 354 to 60. The New York Times, describing the vote as, quote, the most significant bipartisan repudiation of Mr. Trump since he took office. We are also joined in Washington, D.C., by Ro Khanna, Democratic Congress member from California, member of the House Oversight Committee, um, uh, which Congress member Cummings uh, headed. And in a moment, we're going to talk about Congress member Cummings with Congress member Rokana. Our condolences to you <clears throat> on the death of your chairman, um, uh, such a significant figure in U.S. history. But we wanted to go to this unprecedented, at this moment, bipartisan rejection of what Trump has done. Your response to what's happening now in northern Syria? Let me first let me just say it's a sad day with Chairman Cummings passing. He was a great man, a son of a sharecropper who was a civil rights icon in this country, and it's a real loss, not just for Congress, but for the country. Uh, President Trump has put American security at risk uh, and has really been irresponsible. And this is a clear illustration of the difference between progressives who have been calling for military restraint in President Trump's America First policy that doesn't consider the moral worth of anything other than American interests. I would make two points. First, the compromise of national security. He pulled out our troops from the region without notifying the Kurds, without notifying any of our allies. And as a result, a lot of ISIS prisoners uh, have been released. And these folks could be threats now uh, to our interests and to the United States. So we were winning the war against ISIS. President Trump, with this one action, without giving any notification, has put the national security of this country uh, at risk. More broadly, we have a moral responsibility in Syria. We called for regime change in 2011. We have helped arm uh, some of the opposition groups in, to Assad. We have struck Assad when he engaged in the chemical attacks against his own people. We have had troops there fighting ISIS. We can't just get involved in a place and then walk away and not have some moral responsibility. We have a moral responsibility not just to uh, the Kurds, who fought with us against ISIS. We have a moral responsibility to accept Syrian refugees. We have a moral responsibility to help rebuild a society that was ravaged by civil war where we were involved. So these are the places where President Trump has shown absolutely no consideration for uh, the obligations America has. Well, I'd like to go back to President Trump's press conference on Wednesday afternoon. He talked about the U.S. military presence abroad and his decision to send additional troops to Saudi Arabia, even as he's withdrawing troops from Syria. We're in many countries, many, many countries. I, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many. I know the exact number, but I'm embarrassed to say it because it's so foolish. We're in countries, we're protecting countries that don't even like us. They take advantage of us. That they don't pay nothing. Uh, you probably saw, some of you wrote and covered the fact that we're sending some additional troops to Saudi Arabia. That's true. And I appreciate the fact that I negotiated for a short period of time, a matter of minutes, with Saudi Arabia, and they've agreed to pay for the full cost of all of that deployment and more, much more. Trump was later asked about what's transpired since the withdrawal of U.S. troops from northern Syria. Mr. President, you said you withdrew 28 troops. 28. They say it was 28. We thought it was 50, but it was about 28, 26 to 28 troops. And all accounted what's for, nobody that... injured. Listen, all accounted for, nobody injured, nobody missing. It's really nice. But, but look what's happened since those troops were withdrawn and since you had that conversation with President Erdogan. You know what's happened? No American soldiers have been killed. That's what's happened. So, uh, Representative uh, Kanna, can you respond uh, to that? I mean, you yourself have taken a position asking for the withdrawal, saying that, you know, U.S. military should not uh, be in the Middle East. Uh, what do you think President Trump, the Trump administration, could have done uh, to safeguard the lives of uh, the Kurds who are now suffering from this Turkish assault? And what kind of pressure could the Trump administration have put uh, on Turkey to ensure that the safety of the Kurds? 
Well, I have called for responsible withdrawal, but not a withdrawal that is oblivious to human life in Syria or to American interests in Syria. President Trump, at the very first instance, should have notified the Kurds uh, about what our intentions were and notified our allies. I mean, he did this in a phone call with Erdogan uh, without even giving the Kurds notice. And, in fact, we were misleading the Kurds to believe that the Americans would have their back. Second, we have a tremendous amount of leverage uh, with Turkey. We could have gotten a deal uh, with Erdogan uh, that would have prevented this kind of invasion. We give them military support. We give them economic support. Uh, they are a NATO ally. There was no consideration of that with the Trump administration. But his answer really illustrates what he's thinking, in that he does not have any concern for non-American life. Uh, here, it's uh, just a total indifference to the fate of the Kurds who fought with us. That's not the American tradition. In America, we believe and have a consideration for human rights. And also, I think the president has totally miscalculated in allowing for the resurgence of ISIS, uh, and his actions have led to this precipitous withdrawal. What I think is really going on here is that the president has surrounded himself with war hawks like Mike Pompeo, Secretary of State Pompeo and Bolton. Uh, they don't agree with his instinct of withdrawal. Even Mattis didn't. And so he feels constrained, and he's fighting his own administration, and that leads to uh, rash actions uh, that uh, are destabilizing and hurt human life. It would have been much better if he had found people who had expertise and shared his value of uh, withdrawal and would have been able to do so in a way that would have protected American interests and, and civilian life. Well, Congressman Kanna, there seems to be some confusion about exactly how many troops uh, uh, the U.S. intends to withdraw from northern Syria and all of Syria. Uh, Trump says 28. What do we know about exact figures and where uh, these troops are going? Well, I don't have the details of the exact figures, but what I do know is the withdrawal has already given a green light to Turkey to invade, that there are already stories of the loss of human life. Uh, there is the story of thousands and thousands of people being displaced. So whatever action we have already taken has given Turkey the license to go in uh, and begin the displacement of the Kurds. But I will be, with our Armed Services and Oversight Committee, getting the facts of what the uh, president's policy now is. Is it a complete withdrawal? Does he intend to leave any troops now uh, still there? Uh, and what does it mean that the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, has also condemned this? I mean, the reason there's no action on m most any issue um, between the House and the Senate is because the House is Democrat, the Senate is Republican, and so the Senate doesn't endorse what the House does. Is he going to put a similar measure on the floor? Is there going to be a joint condemnation? I hope he does. I, I expect the Senate will do something. Uh, but we need more than just the condemnation of the president's actions. We need to have a framework uh, in Congress for, uh, for dealing with Turkey and making it clear that uh, Turkey's uh, economic relationship with the United States, uh, their relationship on our military arms sales are in jeopardy if they don't immediately stop uh, the invasion, if they don't stop the displacement of Kurds. And then we need a plan in the Congress about our moral responsibility to take in Syrian refugees, to take in refugees uh, who are Kurds, who have been displaced, to figure out what economic assistance uh, we can provide to that area to help rebuild societies that have been devastated in a civil war where we've been, we have been involved. And and, uh, Congressman Khanna, what about the kinds of sanctions that Trump, uh, the Trump administration has put in place? Are those sufficient? And has there been any discussion of uh, uh, military sanctions? The EU has, of course, uh, imposed a partial arms embargo on Turkey. We have been talking about potential uh, arms sales uh, restrictions to Turkey. Uh, it's something that the Foreign Affairs Committee is discussing and uh, the, the Armed Services Committee is discussing. I don't think the sanctions have been sufficient for the simple reason that the 
Turkish uh, invasion continues and the displacement continues. Uh, this will only be resolved when Turkey stops taking those actions. Unfortunately, as I realized uh, when we did the Yemen war powers resolution, which also passed in a bipartisan way in the House and the Senate uh, to restrict the president uh, from refueling Saudi planes, uh, what I realized then is that the president of the United States has an extraordinary amount of power. There's only so much that uh, Congress can do. But I think we have to maximize uh, our congressional uh, oversight, which is really uh, about restricting arms sales and economic aid uh, to Turkey. And if you can respond to the reports that we're hearing, as President Trump talks about the situation being nice there um, in northern Syria, uh, because no U.S. troops have died, um, the reports coming out um, uh, of Syria, uh, a Turkish airstrike on a civilian caravan in northern Syria Sunday, killing 15 people, including two Syrian Kurdish journalists, Mohammed Hussein Rasho, a reporter for Syria TV, journalist Saad Ahmed for, of Harar News, uh, President Trump saying if no U.S. life is lost. Well, I think some journalist needs to just ask the president bluntly, do you believe in matters if non-Americans die? Is that a moral consideration for you? Do you care about lives that are non-American, and let him come out and say what America first foreign policy actually is. Is he saying that nothing has moral worth if it's not about American interests and American lives? That has never, never been the American tradition. We had a Declaration of Independence that talked about the rights, inalienable rights of every human being, the dignity of every human being. Uh, President Trump is perverting uh, the very essence of American ideals when he makes statements like that. And moreover, this is not just about the loss of Kurdish life. Uh, this is not just the loss of journalists overseas lives. This is about the resurgence of ISIS that our troops fought so hard over the last few years. And those ISIS fighters pose a threat not just to Syria or Turkey uh, or the Middle East. They pose a threat to the United States. Oslem, your, your response. Your well, final. To add to that, first of all, Trump is trying to make it seem as if he's taking troops out of a war zone. It's, I mean, there was no war before he withdrew the troops. So his withdrawing of the troops— In that area. In that area. It was a peaceful area. It was democratic, pluralist, feminist. They had their own system of governing. And the, the ethnicities that he claims that are fighting were living peacefully. They have developed communes that talked and discussed. It was the promise, the hope for peace for the Middle East. But then his withdrawal of the troops caused that war. So he's making as if they are, he's taking the U.S. troops out of a war zone. It wasn't. He triggered this war. He created this seconds. war. He created this war. And so he has the responsibility to stop it, which could have been stopped by a no-fly zone. So even we're not asking for the troops remaining there forever. We have asked for guarantees such as no-fly zone that would prevent this war, which he didn't. And, of course, we'll continue to cover this issue. Oslam Gonar, we want to thank you so much for being with us, assistant professor of sociology and anthropology at the City University of New York, and Congressmember Ro Khanna of California. Again, our condolences on the death of the Oversight Committee chair. Elijah Cummings. That does it for our broadcast. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. Our website is democracynow.org.